Welcome back to the channel guys, it's Nick at Talk and Review. We've got a great video for you today which I'm really excited about and we are doing a questions and answers with director Isaac Florentine. Florentine is a film director and he's best known for doing the martial arts and action genres. He's done 20 plus films as well as I think it's at least over 100 TV episodes. As well as that he's a huge practitioner of martial arts and I believe that he's been doing it himself since he's 13. So lots of experience in that avenue. So let's get into the interview with Isaac Florentine. So my first question is, what was it that inspired you to get into filmmaking? What inspired me to become a filmmaker? I grew up in the 60s in Israel. It was then a tiny little country surrounded by enemies. And the only way to get other cultures was going to the theaters and watch movies. I was fascinated by Westerns especially by the Italian Westerns. What I liked in those Westerns was that they cut straight to the chase. They didn't waste time with too much dialogue or love story. It was straight to the point. At a certain point, I saw first it was uh, a fistful of dollars, then the good, the bad and the ugly. And I got really curious who makes the decision to show only the eyes or only the hands of the actors. I uh, talked to my brother, that is eight years older than me and was a film of film, and I asked him that question and he told me, look, that's the director. The director makes the movie and he's the one that is the storyteller. And it was, it, it fascinated me. I started diving in and getting more interested in movies. And then around 1972, I saw Bruce Lee in Fists of Fury and suddenly I realized that you can do an action movie that is all based on martial arts. At that point, I was already training in karate and the seed that I might become a filmmaker and do these kind of movies was on or came on. Who would you say are the directors that have influenced you the most throughout your career? There's actually one, and it's Sergio Leone. What I loved was that his style is operaic, is bombastic. And he takes his time to build the scene. And he's very manieristic about it. He stylized the style. And then, remember, as a child watching it, it felt like I'm watching something out of the ordinary. Yes, there are other directors that you can see and you appreciate, but the influence, really, the influence, came from Sergio Leone. Not only The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, I think when I watched later, Once Upon a Time in the West, as a child, I didn't realize how brilliant is that movie. Only years later, when I watched it again, I saw how this movie is amazing. And I think now it's uh, really my favorite movie, uh, even more than The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. It tells a story in a very specific way, and he moves, his pacing is unique, and his visual, for me, is out of the ordinary. Are there better directors today? Did uh, cinema evolve? Yes, but you really stay with the first influence that you have because that's what gave you the passion and the drive to do movies. As a director and doing low budget movies, how have the challenges over the years changed? So I think that you can divide the period of doing movies or especially low budget movies into two periods. Before Netflix, and after Netflix. Before Netflix, movies really lived in VHS and later on DVD. 
That means you do a movie and this movie goes, let's say, to Blockbuster Video. People rent it. They pay certain fee. Then let's say they're late bringing it back. They pay more money for it. And after a few months, that unit, either VHS or DVD, is being sold for $19.99. So multiply those units into video stores around the world and you can see exactly how much that movie made. So those movies were pretty profitable at that time. Netflix changed the game because you're paying a global fee and you can watch as many movies as you want. So it's the little movies, what is called the low budget movies or the B movies that really suffered. And how it affects the filmmaker that does it, it's the amount of days. Because if before I could shoot a movie in 36 days or 30 days, now I have to shoot a movie in 24 days or 20 days or 18 days and it's really affecting the quality. Because when you do action, an action movie, time is what you need in order to cover the action correctly. I know as a fan that a lot of things can change even when filming and this can be the days are reduced or things are getting cut from the film. How do you stay motivated even though your full vision isn't being portrayed on the screen? That's a very good question. How do I get motivated once they reduce days, etc.? Especially when it happens in the middle of the movie and things like this do happen. So when I shoot a movie, I'm like racing against time. I feel like all the time I'm in a war and I have to win that war. I totally focus on what I have to do. Everything around the movie and the set is forgotten. I totally concentrate on the set. Also, I'm a big believer in pre-production and I plan everything in pre-production. However, I always come with plan B and sometimes even with plan C. So if I have to modify and to change, I'm mentally already in that zone and I know how to do it. Last thing, there is nothing like experience than experience. So when things change on you, you always find the solution how to come out of it and sometimes even to improve it. But it is a constant war and you have to be totally focused on what you're doing. You should concentrate only in what you do and the rest doesn't matter. How have the budgets changed for these type of films and how much of it does actually go towards the films? Well, definitely when the profit of margin is getting smaller, then the budget goes down. The change is really on the amount of days because usually the above the line is more or less the same above the line. You have to pay the actors, you have to pay the talent. They have the market uh, price. So what suffers is the below the line and usually it's the amount of days. Over the last 10 years I've seen as a fan the quality in films is reduced gradually and this could be the locations of the films, the budget etc. But I also feel that in the last two to three years, especially with some of Scott's newer films, the quality has started to go back up again. Do you feel that this is either the low budget genres getting better or is it the talent that's behind the film? Well, the quality of the films started to deteriorate once budget became smaller and also scripts became, or well, let's say the emphasis or looking for a good script became a secondary thing to companies that are still doing low budget movies. And it's really, it's all about the script. If I'm looking at good movies that you mentioned with Scott, if you look at them, always the script is good. Because when he's doing a movie, let's say with Jesse Johnson, Jesse is a very gifted writer 
and a very gifted director. So he will make sure that the script will be a good script. And the movie can be as good as the script. It cannot be better than the script. So when you're handed a bad script, it's very, very hard to come with a decent movie with it. Sometimes you don't have a choice. That's what you're handed. You're trying to fix it as much as you can. But I always say it's like a carpenter that is building a table and one of the legs of the table is short and no matter what, that table will be wobbly. If you could give one tip for a low budget director, what would it be? One tip for a low budget director. Actually, I think it's a tip for any director. First of all, pre-plan. Understand that pre-production is the most important thing because the way that I see it, I do the movie in pre-production. This is something actually I learned from Hitchcock. Hitchcock used to say, everything is ready, now we just have to go and shoot it. And he was absolutely right. So that's lesson number one. Lesson number two is when I cover a scene or I shoot a scene, I want to make sure that the geography is understood so people will understand where, where basically we are. Because once you cut to tight close-ups and uh, you start to lose the direction, the, and when I say direction, I mean the 180, what is the right, what is the left, it starts to become abstract to the audience and he start to detach himself from the movie. So it's another factor to think about it. Another factor is, as a director, you're just a person. And as I always say, I'm not that smart, I'm pretty dumb. That's why I listen to people, not only listen, I want people to argue with me. But I want them to argue with me in the pre-production stage. Because once we're shooting, you can listen, but you got to be very opinionated and to go with your gut. And your gut is the most important thing to do. So sometimes you have to be the benevolent tyrant and say, okay, I hear you, I hear you. This is the way that we do it. But really hear, because sometimes you can hear something and it's a brilliant idea. And then you have to stop yourself, be honest and say, wow, that's a great idea. And not to be afraid to go to a different direction. So be open-minded, but be assertive and know what you want. And again, the way to do it is have a solid pre-production. You as a director, you have to know what you want to shoot. When I go to a location and I see a location or a set is built, I already know how I'm going to shoot the scene. Do you have a current low budget film that you really like? And if you do, why? Well, maybe not that current, but I'm referring, let's say, to the movie that was done in 2007. It's a Japanese movie called Kurobi, Black Belt. It was very low budget, but I think it was done in a smart way that you don't pay attention that it was shot in very few locations with very few extras. What made the story or what made the movie good was the story. It was a real karate movie and the brilliant thing that they did was in, instead of taking actors and teaching the martial arts, they took two karate guys and a real karate instructors. Uh, and basically they taught them how to act and they really pulled it off. So the story, you've seen the story before, but the way it was done for me, it was very, very unique. And I carry this movie with me and I know it was a very low budget. So I highly recommend it, Kuro Obi. So you've got a new film coming out next year with Scott Adkins called Seized. What can you tell us about it? Regarding Seized, because the movie is not ready yet, I have one superstition. 
Only one. I never talk about a movie before I finish it. So I think we should uh, postpone and delay that question. So you've worked with Scott Adkins for a number of films now. Do you feel that you challenge him in different ways? So do you either go for the acting or do you challenge him with the martial arts side of things? I think I worked with uh, Scott around nine or ten times. Uh, we both challenge each other because Scott is an excellent actor and he's a perfectionist. As an actor and also as a martial artist. So uh, when I do a movie with Scott, I have the opportunity usually to push the envelope and I do it. And uh, Scott is very demanding. As an actor, he's very demanding from himself. And obviously, he wants everybody to be in the same uh, boat with him, like to, to do their very, very best. And uh, not only I feel it, but also the crew. And usually we work with the same crew, so the crew knows him and uh, they really follow his lead with it. Uh, when Scott comes to set, he's a very, very hard worker. He comes to work. There is no wasting uh, time uh, on doing stuff that is not making the movie. That's what I love uh, in him and that's why I love working with him. Not only me, but everybody. When can we see you and Scott going toe to toe on the screen? When do you'll see Scott and myself going toe to toe on the screen? I think of only two possibilities. Either him going against an old man or him that is an excellent actor going against the worst actor that can be on set and that's me. Isaac, I just want to say I appreciate you doing this and taking your time out to answer some questions for us. Thank you, Nick. It was my pleasure too. Thank you for thinking about me and thank you for contacting me. So that was our Q&A with Isaac Florentine. We're going to be doing a lot more interviews with the guys in the film industry. So make sure that you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. Drop a comment down below. What's your favourite Isaac Florentine movie? I know mine is definitely Undisputed 3. Thanks for watching the video guys and we'll see you in the next video. Check out this playlist on the side. This is where we're going to put all our interviews that we do. And also check out this video that we did on the character of Yuri Boyka. And don't forget to subscribe.